All right, so this is the herd update. We already did, you know, I think last week we gave you the the juveniles and does. Now we're going to go through the weathers. Um, and I got a lot of goat power this year, and I got some up-and-comers that are coming up. So we're going to be having some three-year-olds, and I'm excited about them. So I'll just kind of speak about each one individually. This is General. General is now four. Well, he'll be four this spring, so he's going to be in his full full-on adult season he's over 200 pounds i think he's in that 210 ish 215 ish he's not the tallest goat he's what i would call a square goat he's actually out of cinder um, and he was bred with the Oberhosley back in the day with dwight sharp so um, i don't have a lot of this genetics except for cinder on my place but he's a nicely built goat and he really carries well i do like him he's really really good um, so general's four He's coming in as a really strong producer, and he's been really solid. This is Buster. You can see him. He's all hackled up. Buster is trying to assert himself as the herd dominant, so he's always kind of being a bully and being a turd. He's going on. He's seven this year. He's going on his eighth season. He's always been a little fat and a little slow and a little lazy but he makes my a team he's he's solid he's just on the lower end of my super solid goats um, but this is one of the first goats i ever bred and buster is really really an aggressive strong goat in the herd here's timber now timber struggled last year and we're not quite sure why we don't know if it was teeth we don't know if it was nutrition we don't know if he was battling something in the end of the season he was really slow on the trail at the end of the season. Um, he's my heaviest goat. He weighs in the 260s. And so I'm really curious to see if that shows up again this year. Timber's a very sweet goat, and he's really good and willing. He's, he's easy to forget about because he's never trouble. Um, I love him. He's a great goat. But last year, again, he was super slow on the trail at the end of the season. I think it's his teeth. We still have yet to float him. Um, he's not losing body condition. I mean, he's a little thin because it's towards the end of winter now. And the hay I have this year, I wish was better, but it isn't. And so I'm kind of, I'm making sure that the weathers, see, I'd rather have these weathers come out of the winter instead of being all big fat is, is have them be thin. And you can see none of my goats are like skinny or that sort of thing. But a lot of times they come out of winter a little fat. And so I've been willing to feed a little bit more subpar feed. Um, I do have some three and a half year olds that are finishing, but for the most part they're finished and they're eating more often and they're going through more food um, and, and they're doing fine. So I, I'm not concerned about that, but Timber, I'm going to watch him this year. We, I hope he's, he's only like eight. I don't know what his, his issue was this last year, but we'll get it figured out. He's also one that has a really big protrusion. Come here, come here, stop. He has a big protrusion on his rib cage so see this white spot on his fur his he has like a rib that sticks out really far so it makes hard to get a saddle to fit him so this is one of your indications that you had a saddle rub is they'll get a white spatch in their fur now because our saddles are custom fitted he doesn't have it on the other side but it, it's just you can feel when you feel long hair he's got one rib that really sticks out right there and I've thought about creating a donut in the saddle or something that accommodates that little spot. And it could have been that he was just getting kind of saddle sore there and performing slowly. But I don't think so. I just really don't think so. I think he had something going on in terms of his teeth or his mineral or he was battling, you know, some kind of thing, you know, late in the season or I don't know. So we'll have to see how he goes this year. I, I hope he performs better. Um, then we got Sargent over here, and Sargent had his three-year-old season this last year and did good. He's with General. He was raised with General, and now he's in his four-year-old season. He's in the 220s. Um, he's a big goat. He's strong. He's out of Bella, and, um, you know, he's, he's three-quarters Alpine, one-quarter Sonnen, one-quarter Nubian of all things, um, and he's performing really well, well on the trail. Um, he's not a super ultra elite A-teamer. General's better than him, um, but we'll see how he comes into his own. A lot of these three-and-a-half-year-olds, 
they just can't perform as well because they're still growing on the trail and I don't find that I really know what they're going to do until they're full on four. So we're going to see how he does. Now on to Merciless, one of the old men. And Merciless is literally that. He's, he's an old man. Hey, back. Sorry. So Buster, when I'm out here with the other goats, he gets frisky. Did you see how that just postured up? That's kind of a learning moment where... I moved his tail, he got frustrated with me, and he wanted to posture up, but I put him right back in his place right then. I've never seen him be aggressive to people, but when I'm out here with all these goats, he gets kind of mixed up, and the other big thing is I got buck scent on my hand, and he reacts to that especially. If you've watched my videos over time, you actually saw a video where I had to flip him because he, he was smelling buck scent, and I'm sure that's what's going on right now is that you know I was just in the other pen. So here's Merciless. He's going on 10 now. He's, he's thin, but he wouldn't have made it through this winter. He doesn't have any teeth left in his head to chew his cud or his, his hay. So we're feeding him a specialized diet of, and, and I've, I'm trying to, to develop basically a geriatric diet. And what he's getting is he's getting chaff hay with, mixed with grain. And the reason he's doing that is chaff hay is made out of alfalfa, so it's heavy in calcium. So I'm feeding some phosphorus and grain in combination also to help him gain some, some weight. Um, but he, uh, he, di he literally is reliant on the chopped up fermented hay along with grain. And he actually has survived this winter which he wouldn't have if we wouldn't have done that. He was really getting thin, and you could tell he wasn't doing good towards the end of the summer. Um, the same with Thorn, and you're going to see him later. We had the same issue with him. So we love Merciless. He's a super special goat, and he's iconic in the pack goat world and just in the goat world. So we're keeping him alive with special feed. Um, but the thing that I will tell you is that I won't do this again. And the reason I won't do it again necessarily is, and, and, is money doesn't grow on trees for me. I don't have more than I need. Um, and so for me, chaffe is pretty expensive. And uh, I had to feed a lot of it to keep Thorn and Merciless alive this winter. And basically, I'll have to feed it to them the rest of their life. So it'll be when I stop feeding them that special diet that they'll, they'll not make it anymore. So... That's the way it is. Um, so yeah, we'll see how long my chaff hay that I bought lasts. I bought like 2000 bucks in it and hopefully it lasts for a good long time and maybe into this summer. And we're actually going to see if we can get Thorn back on the trail. But you know, Merciless is just, he's just getting really old. He's an old goat. Um, and he's, he's dying from the thing that all ungulates die from is eventually their teeth don't function anymore. And that's what he's dealing with. So that's Merciless. Noah is doing super good. Noah continues to surprise me and continues to perform well. Um, he's not getting as fat this winter, which I like because it always takes him so long to get in shape during the season. Um, he's really developed into a good goat. He's probably the alpha in the herd now. He really asserts himself. He can be kind of a butthole at the gates, pushing other goats out of the way and stuff. He does like love though. He is a loving goat and and he's got tons of personality. People on the trail love him. A lot of times he's my people who I take on the trail that haven't been around my goats. He's their favorite because he's always at the back and he's always huffing and puffing. He's like the goat that everybody roots for because he feels like the underdog. Um, not very smart, um, but lots of will and super good. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell him for thousands of dollars. He's great. He's definitely a strong A-teamer. Um, now on to slick now slick is six this year and slick is super good i really like slick um he's my string leader he's got more will and determination than any goat i have in the pasture um, he's probably one of the best goats i ever had i would rank him up there with chester um, he's only about 190 pounds it's not because he's big it's just he's built perfectly i talk a lot about him um, he's just a super, super good goat that I'm really grateful for. And he's, he's six now, so he's starting to get up there. Um, he's going to turn seven in the spring. So, you know, a lot of my really strong goats are starting to get older. 
Um, and, you know, I talk a lot about Slick, so I won't go on and on about him, but he's great. And then this is Jon Snow. Jon Snow has never really been that great. He's just okay. Yeah, you can just hang out here. Um, he's, he's just okay. He, he doesn't seem to have a lot of will. He doesn't want to get after it on the trail. I think he's an example of a goat that never really got work till he was four. Didn't know that he had anything that he was ever going to do for a job. Um, I have other genetics out of this goat that perform really well, but this particular guy, he's just, I don't think he's lazy. I just don't know if he has a work ethic. Um, he just doesn't have a lot of go and want to get after it. He does in the herd. He'll battle between them. If I ha had to judge based on temperament, I would have said he'd have been real aggressive. But John's just kind of a, he's, he's a space filler. And when I need extra goat power, I put him on the trail. I'm going to give him a chance to be a top level performer this year. He's five now. Um, so we're going to give him a chance to really perform this year. And hopefully he will. So let's jump to the last couple. It's all my juveniles that are still at the feeders, um, but one more is Thorn. So this is Thorn, Merciless's counterpart. You can see his coat's looking a little bit rough. He's, he's also nine. He's getting a specialized diet. He has more teeth than Merciless, but none of them oppose each other. So the, the teeth that he has, they're just doing air balls, and he has nothing to grind to. Um, so... We, we did our best to help him with his teeth, but they're just actually gone. Um, and so we're feeding him a specialized diet, and he's doing better. I, I do actually want to see if he can be on the trail with a specialized diet and whether we can extend his life. I know Merciless is too far, far gone, but Thorn's actually still healthier. But we'll see. You know, I'll, I'll keep him around. Again, he's a goat I really love. He's always been so dedicated and kind, and he's just a good, super good goat. All right, let's jump to the juve. These are the three and a half year olds. So these guys are gonna get their first real heavy trail experience this year. This is Dingle and Dingle's the prophet's dad and or prophet's grandpa and um, uh, uh, preacher's dad. And Dingle's in the 220s now as a three and a half year old. He's a really nice goat. Oh, no, he's not. Excuse me. This, that's right. This guy's in like the high 180s, low 190s. He's thinner, and he's built like the other two in terms of height and bone mass and everything else. He's just a thinner goat. You can always feel his ribs. He's always got a little bit of hip. He's built in a really good way. I think he'll finish out in probably the 205, 210. Then there's Solo, who is girlfriend's um, son from three and a half years ago. Um, He's really solid. I think he's going to be a super good packer. He's what I call a, more of a square goat. He doesn't quite have the legs, but he's already over 200 as a three and a half year old. And then there's Blade, who's also over 200. He was 205. Come on, Blader. And Blade's just the sweetest guy ever. And this is, this is the slick genetic stuff. You going to the camera, man? The camera girl? Hi, Blader. We've been treating his ears lately. He's been having yeast infections in his ears, and we've been dealing with that. He's a little standoffish with me right now because I've been wrestling him down to treat his ears. But Blade is already 205, 210, three and a half. He's really tall. He's like 38 tall and stuff. This is a super, super, really, really machine goat. I'm really excited to see how he performs. He puts on a little bit better body configuration and size than Slick, but this is out of the same genetics as Slick, and I'm just super excited to see what he's going to become. He's crazy athletic. He's crazy smart. His temperament is super sweet. He's really a kind goat, huh, buddy? Yeah, such a good boy. So that's them. So we got the weathers. We got the does. It's a beautiful day here on Ripple Ranch. I want to thank you for watching this. Um, when you watch our videos, just know, you know, our expertise is in goats. When you do business with us through our courses or through um, our website or whatever, that's what helps us to keep the lights on, and we're so grateful for it. We have an incredible Goat Club membership that will bring you so much tremendous value in helping you learn how to raise goats and how to be a better homesteader. We call it lifesteading here because we look at it in a well-rounded way. And I just really want to thank you for your time and let you know how grateful I am for you. And 
this is our opportunity to give and then to hopefully to receive in return as well. And uh, none of that is ever expected. So we're really grateful for when you choose to do that. So Mark Warnke, the goat guy signing out. Hope you find that helpful. Bye. <laughs>